Hello everybody, this is Lauren and Miles with Best Practice Medicine. Today we're going to be demonstrating how to apply and acquire a diagnostic quality 12 lead ECG. The first step in acquiring a diagnostic quality 12 lead ECG is the proper position of your patient. Ideally, your patient should be in a supine position. However, some patients cannot tolerate this. If that's the case, you can put them in a semi fowler's position, which is acceptable as well. For the purposes of today, so we can adequately show you the proper chest electrode position, we'll be sitting miles up just a little bit higher than we would normally. Whichever position your patient is in for the EKG, just remember to uh, repeat that position for any follow-on repeat EKGs you may acquire. The second step to acquire diagnostic quality 12 lead ECG is to expose the area where the electrodes are going to be placed. And in this case, we're going to have to remove Miles' shirt. Now that his shirt's removed, we're going to have to expose his lower limbs so we can place the limb leads. So at this point, we're ready to place our limb leads. Now a few things about limb lead placement in a 12 lead, there's only a few rules to have to adhere to to obtain a diagnostic quality ECG when placing limb leads. Number one is you want to make sure that your limb lead is on the limb, that it falls between the shoulder and the wrist. The other rule about limb leads is that you do not want to put them over bony prominences, such as the elbow here, or over large muscle groups. That's just going to increase the amount of artifact. So at this point, I'm gonna identify probably this area right here to place my limb lead, at least my left limb lead. Now I'm gonna make sure that my right limb lead I'm going to make it in a symmetrical location, so about the same location on the right-hand side. The same rules apply for the legs. Below the hip, but above the ankle, staying away from bony prominences and large muscle groups. In this case, uh, just due to access to Miles' legs, I'm going to go ahead and put them here just above the ankles. Now that we've identified our limb lead electrode placement sites, we do need to select a package of electrodes. Uh, in this case, our electrodes are in date. Uh, this is a 10 pack. So we'll be using all of these for all of our lead placements. Uh, they are in date, so presumably that we do have uh, conductive gel that is not dried out on these, which is important. Uh, the other thing about these electrodes, these differ in style from EKG machine to EKG machine. Uh, these are more for the pre-hospital uh, type of EKG uh, monitors. In hospital, you might find a tab style. Uh, it doesn't really matter the style of EKG electrodes. Uh, placement and acquisition of the 12 lead, the principles of that remain the same despite the manufacturer. Now that we've selected our electrodes, we're going to turn our attention to proper skin preparation. Uh, the first thing to consider is the amount of body hair. In this case, with large amounts of body hair that's going to affect the, uh, the adhesion of the electrode and transmission of the signal through the electrode, you're going to want to take a razor, oftentimes it's a disposable safety razor, and remove the hair from the skin. The other thing to consider is the uh, the oils left on the skin as well. Uh, if you take a, an alcohol pad and rub the area where the, the electrode is going to adhere, uh, that will remove the oils from the skin. And in some cases, you might have an excessive amount of dead or dry skin. That will also affect the, uh, the signal acquisition for your 12 lead. In this case, you're going to grab a 4x4 or gauze, and you'll rub the area uh, 10 to 12 strokes um, it gets just a little bit pink, and, and, and that maneuver will remove the dead skin and improve the quality of your 12 lead ECG. So at this point, with our skin prepped, we're ready to apply the limb leads. I'll take my electrodes, I will open them up. I will find the appropriate electrode. Uh, these are labeled uh, right leg, left leg, right arm, and left arm. Now that we have the limb leads placed, we're going to turn our attention and place the chest leads or the precordial leads. Unlike the limb lead placement, the chest leads must be exact. So there's quite a few rules to chest lead placement in order to acquire a diagnostic quality 12 ECG. The first landmark that we need to find in order to place our chest leads is the fourth intercostal space. We can do this two ways. The first way to do this is to locate the angle of Louis. First, you're going to find the sternal notch and you're going to 
feel or palpate about an inch and a half below the sternal notch, you'll feel this ridge in the sternum. This is the angle of Louis. It's the junction of the sternal body and the manubrium. This, this slight ridge that you feel in the sternum is at the level of the second rib. So immediately to the left or right of this, you will feel the actual rib. That is the second rib. Below the second rib, you will find the second intercostal space. From here, we're gonna march down feeling each rib in each space all the way down until we find the fourth intercostal space. So if this is the second ICS, there's the third rib. Here's the third ICS. Here's the fourth rib, and here is the fourth intercostal space. This is where we're gonna place V1, just immediately to the right of the sternum. V2 is gonna be placed at the same level, immediately to the left of the sternum. The second method for locating the fourth intercostal space is to palpate the clavicle. Immediately inferior to the clavicle, that rib space that you feel is the first intercostal space. So below that, feeling for the rib in the similar technique that we did just before, that would be the second rib. And again, below that is the second intercostal space, third rib, third intercostal space, fourth rib, and then finally the fourth intercostal space. Again, V1 goes to the right of the sternum and V2 goes immediately to the left of the sternum. Now that we have placed V1 and V2, we're gonna skip V3 and find the landmark for V4. V4 lies at the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. So now that we've found our fourth intercostal space, it's not too difficult to find the fifth. You just palpate the fifth rib and then the space below that. What we're gonna to have to do now is to find the clavicle. And what we're gonna do is establish the full length of the clavicle and basically split the middle difference. So once we find the full length of the clavicle, we split that difference, lead V4 is gonna be placed at this level. Fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. Now that we place lead V4, we're gonna skip V5 and place lead V6. V6 lies at the level of lead V4, but it's at the mid-axillary line. Miles, would you go ahead and lift your arm up? At this point, we're gonna to have to estimate where the mid-axillary line is. And by the name mid-axillary, it's mid-axilla. So if you locate their axilla, and just draw a line directly down, this is your mid-axillary line. So what we're gonna do is just march it perpendicular to the mid-axillary line, and that's where lead six, V6, is gonna be placed. It's important to note when placing V6 that it does not follow the fifth intercostal space. You wanna be perpendicular to the mid-axillary line. Now that we have placed V1, V2, V4, and V6, we need to place V3 and V5 because we skipped those. And this is just a matter of splitting the distance equally between the electrodes that we have placed. So the lead V3 goes halfway between V2 and V4 and V5 will be placed halfway between V4 and V6. Now that we've placed all of our electrodes on the chest, we can locate our chest electrode or precordial electrode wires and then place them on the appropriate electrode. In this case, in this model, they are labeled V1 through V6. You may encounter a situation where these are very short depending on the model and it may pull your electrode out of place. If that's the case, you're gonna to have to probably replace the electrode as it will not stick uh, on the original site or the original electrode won't stick uh, once that happens. Now with this model, I will have to hook up the, uh, the uh, precordial wire bundle with my four lead wire set. Here. Now I'm ready to acquire the 12 lead ECG. So now that we're ready to acquire the 12 lead ECG, I'm going to lay miles in a more supine position here, as we had discussed. In addition, we want his upper and lower extremities uncrossed. We want them relaxed to so not uh, cause any muscle tremor. So if you can put your arms down at your side, we'll go ahead and relax the shoulders. We'll make sure the legs are not crossed. If their hands are resting on a metal uh, bed rail, we wanna make sure that that's not happening. Also, uh, there can be interference from portable electronic devices. So if you have phones or anything like that, you might wanna set them a little farther away from the patient. That way it won't affect the quality of your, your 12 lead. On this model, I just simply press the 12 lead button and 
uh, it's going to acquire the 12 loop. And so during this time, you want your patient just to remain still. Don't hold their breath. They just need to breathe normally. After a few moments, after acquiring and analyzing the 12 lead, it should print out. And there you have a diagnostic quality 12 lead ECG. We hope you found this video informative and useful to your clinical practice. Tune in next time for more from BPM TV. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, Lauren. What does this mean? That's a great question, Miles. If you want to know more about how to interpret 12 leads, uh, go to bestpracticemedicine.com and check into one of our basic or advanced 12 lead ECG courses. Thanks.